This is part two of the video lecture for Math 181 for Wednesday, April 29th. Unfortunately, there's some lawn care guys outside right now, and I'm going to speak a little bit louder so that you can hear me over here over that. Um, I need to make this video right now. That's why I'm doing it. In part one, we were talking about the average value of a function, and we derived this simple formula to calculate the average value of a function, which is equal to uh, 1 divided by v minus a. So the average value of a function on a certain interval is equal to 1 divided by v minus a, the, the two endpoints of the interval, times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Okay. So what I want to do now is do an example problem in which we're asking ourselves, what is the average value of f of x equals square root of x on the interval 0 to 4? What is the average value of that function? Well, we can use this formula, and f average will be equal to uh, 1 over, and our interval is 0 to 4, so 1 over 4 minus 0 times the, the integral from 0 to 4 of square root of x dx. Okay, and we can now, this is a simple integral to do. This is 1 over 4 times the integral from 0 to 4 of x to the 1 half times dx. Okay, and now we can integrate this, and this integrates to 1 fourth uh, x to the 3 halves over 3 halves evaluated from 0 to 4. Okay, and then if we multiply by the reciprocal of this, we get 1 fourth times 2 thirds times x to the 3 halves evaluated from 0 to 4. Okay, and this gives us, uh, let's see, 2 twelfths, right, 2 twelfths uh, x to the 3 fourths, excuse me, 3 halves from 0 to 4. And this equals 1 sixth times x to the 3 halves from 0 to 4. Okay, and now we can, this is a lot of fanfare here, let's plug in the numbers. So now we evaluate at 0 and 4, and we'll get 4 to the 3 halves power minus a 0 to the 3 halves power. Okay, that's just 0. And 4 to the 3 halves, we take a square root first, we get 2, and we raise it to the third power, that's 8. So now we get 8 sixths. In other words, this is 4 thirds equals 1.33 repeating. Okay, so that's the average value of this function, square root of x, on the interval of 0 to 4. Okay, that's a classic average value problem. Now, I want to mention a theorem called the mean value theorem for integrals. The mean value theorem for integrals. Okay. Um, these guys seem to have particularly loud... Uh, you know, uh, tremors. But anyway, uh, the mean value theorem for integrals, what this says is, it says if, if a function f, if f is continuous um, on some, if f is a continuous function, let me get this right here, uh, sorry, but on AB, yes, of course, on the interval AB, then there exists some c, some number c, such that f of c is equal to uh, the average value of the function on that interval, which is 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Okay, so let's go through this. The mean value for theorem for integrals says if, if you have some function f that's continuous on an interval, then there exists some c, and by the way, this c is in, c is in the interval a, b. There exists some, some number c, finally they quieted down for a bit. Uh, there exists some number c in the interval a, b, such that, the, uh, such that f of c, which is equal to the average value of the function, such that f of c equals 1 over b minus a, to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. There's some c such that f of c equals the average value of the function over this interval. Okay, um, I want to uh, 
talk about what, what does this actually mean. So let me erase this, this upstairs uh, example and talk about what this, what is the mean value theorem really saying to us graphically or visually. So let's imagine we have some function, have a graph of this function. Okay, and the graph looks like this, like that, and we're interested in some interval, let's say we have some interval A and then B. What this is saying is that there exists some number C, and C could be something about right here. There exists some number C such that F of C here uh, is equal to the average value of the function. Okay, So this height here, this is F of C, which is equal to the average value of the function. And I'm going to draw a rectangle here. I'm going to label this point E and this point D. Okay. So what this is saying is that um, there exists some point C such that the area, the area of the rectangle ABDE, that area is the same as the area under the curve. So in other words, what this really is saying is that the area of rectangle ABDE uh, is equal to, and by the way, this area is equal to the height of the rectangle, which is f of c, times the length of the interval, which is uh, b minus a, okay, that the area of this rectangle, which equals this, is also equal to the area under the curve from a to b. In other words, if you calculate the area of this curve, let's, let's do this in two different colors. Okay, if you calculate the area under this curve, and let me use blue for this. So the area under this curve is this right here. In other words, if you calculate the area under the curve, there's some point C such that the area of this rectangle created by C, so the area of this rectangle, the area of that rectangle is equal to the area of the function under the curve from A to B. That's really what the mean value theorem is for integrals is saying graphically. And this makes sense because if we look at this rectangle here, we notice that there's some extra area here above the curve that the curve is not included. But here we're also missing some area. We're missing some area in this rectangle that's included in the area under the curve. So these, these two areas will, for a certain value of C, these two areas will exactly cancel out. And there must be some point C such that f of c times b minus a, which and f of c, by the way, is the average value of the function, f of c times b minus a, which is the area of this rectangle, is equal to the area under the curve from a to b. Okay, I've spent a long time talking about that. Let's, let's apply this theorem to the example problem we were considering earlier. Okay, so if you guys recall the example problem we were considering earlier, which is example one, let's go revisit this. f of x equals square root of x on the interval 0 to 4. Okay, we found in that problem that the average value of this function was 1.33. Okay, what the mean value theorem is saying is there's some c on this interval such that f of c equals the average value. So there's some c such that f of c equals the average value of the function over this interval. Okay. But we know what this function is. So if we plug in c into, into the square root function, we get square root of c. Okay. So we know there's some c such that square root of c equals 1.33. Well, let's solve this for c. If we square both sides, we get c equals 1.33 squared. And that comes out to uh, 1.77. That comes out to 1.77. Okay. And uh, what I want to do here to have this make more sense to you is I want to draw a quick graph. Let me actually move this, move some of this stuff over so I have room for my graph. 
C equals, uh, what was I doing here? C equals 1.77. The average value of the function equals 1.33. So let's, let's create a graph. of square root of x. And if we graph it, it's going to look like this. It's a function that tails off like this. And we're interested in the interval from 0 to 4. Okay, let's put some tick marks in here. This is 2, this is 1, this is 3. And this point right here, the square root of 4 is 2, so this is 2, and this point here is 1. That's our square root function. Now, this is saying there's a point C at 1.77, so a point that's approximately here. There's a point C that's there. Uh, and we know that f of C, the function evaluated at C, is equal to 1.33. So there exists some C such that the area of the rectangle created by this point C, and let me draw this rectangle here. The rectangle created by this point C, this rectangle is equal to, I'll draw it in blue, this rectangle right here. So this C defines a rectangle, and what we're saying here is that the area under the rectangle is equal to the area under this square root curve. And this, this appears to make sense because um, here, here, this, this rectangle would be overestimating the area under the curve because we have all this extra area that's included in the rectangle but not under the curve. Whereas over here, we have some area that's not included in the rectangle but is under the curve. This, these two areas tend to cancel each other out, and they, for this point C, they exactly cancel each other out. So if we were to highlight the extra area, right, this extra area here, which is included in a rectangle but not included under the curve. And this area here, which is included under the curve but not in a rectangle, apparently those two areas are exactly the same for this point C, which as we found is 1.77. So if that makes any sense to you guys, and hopefully it does, uh, that will conclude part two of this video lecture. I will see you guys on Wednesday, and we can do a couple more practice problems relating to the average value of functions and the mean value theorem for integrals.